Hi, I'm Robert Craddock. Tonight on Cricket Legends, we meet a man with a story like no other. A man who was dramatically thrown out of cricket at the peak of his career. Born in Mentone, Victoria, fast bowler Ian Meckiff took 45 wickets in 18 tests. But on December 7, 1963, in a test match against South Africa in Brisbane, his career came to a shattering end. Meckiff was no balled four times in one over for bowling with an illegal action and never played first class cricket again. Ian Meckiff was the focus of one of the most dramatic days in cricket history. This is his story. Welcome to Cricket Legends, Ian. It's nice to be here, Chris. I'm going to start on a, on a different note first up. Uh, you had your controversial moments in your career, but also what about this moment? You were the starring figure in one of the most famous cricket photos ever, ever taken. That's you there. This is the tied test against the West Indies in 1960-61 at the Gabba. And you just failed to make your ground. Have a look at that Calypso madness around you. What are you, what are you seeing? Well, I'm seeing something that was uh, yeah, quite famous, as you said. Uh, but it was rather an exciting thing. It was one that, uh, let, let's be honest, I didn't know that it was a draw. I thought we'd been beaten. Mm. Uh, when we came off the ground uh, in the dressing rooms, I was sitting there not very happy with myself. How, how, why, how did we lose that? And Colin McDonald said, we didn't lose it, it's a tie. So that was the start of a, a, what we could say a very, very dangerous evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and such was the camaraderie between the teams that uh, there were famous stories that they got together after the game and just went into the night. Is, uh, is that true? Yes, we actually got kicked out of the, out of the ground <laughs> around about 10.30 because the, the neighbours of the ground more just complained about the noise because what we did was we, we all got together, the teams and every, the two teams. The Wendy's brought their rum out from, from all over, which they always had plenty of rum. And we always had plenty of beer there, so we, we got into it. So it was about 10.30 and I, I don't remember anything after that, I must admit. <laughs> but it was a very special day and night. What about the tension, Ian? You came to the wicket in the last over when all four possibilities were live. A West Indian win, an Australian win, a draw and a tie. Yeah. And Australia needed five runs off six balls. You must have been so nervous. What was the atmosphere like outside the dressing room for a start? Well, it was, was, was mayhem, really, because everybody didn't really know what was going on. Uh, half, half of... Uh, I know Wally Grout couldn't find, his, couldn't find his gloves and he was sitting on them. <laughs> he, he had to come back. I think he's, he smoked about two packets of cigarettes in the two hours from, di from uh, tea time through. And, uh, yeah, it was, was just... Yeah, got out there and, and all, my, all, all he said to me was that if you hit it, we, we go and... Uh, but just, just, let's uh, take it take it easy. Try and relax a little bit. And I said it's impossible. <laughs> well, Wally, of course, ended up getting run out, didn't he? Because with three balls to go, you needed three. You smacked the ball near the mid-wicket fence. You must have thought you were you were going to win the game. Well, actually, the, the funny part about that was that they, when they mowed the the, the, uh, the ground, they they didn't mow the whole lot each day. They only did half. And this particular half that were out, was next to the fence. So uh, the guy actually sent a letter to me and said he was sitting while he's looking at it and it just pulled up in the clover that was should have been mowed off. So otherwise <laughs> it, it would have gone for four. And all I, all I can say is that I was very happy that it didn't because I wouldn't be sitting here now <laughs> talking to you about it. Yeah. And people look back at Joe Solomon hitting the stumps from side on like it's just freakish, yeah. isn't it? Like even today... Uh, all these decades later, it stands out as just an extraordinary piece of fielding, doesn't it? Yeah, well, he did it twice. He got he ran Davo out in the over before. I'd sign on. Mm. He threw him down, but and he, he ran this. Yeah, he ran me out the same way. The Gabba was the best and worst of your Test career, wasn't it? Uh, the tied Test, and a few years later, of course, uh, famously, you bowled only one over against South Africa before colleague uh, no balled you uh, out of, out of Test cricket, but. Let's start with your action, Ian. Um, you know, I understand there's certain joints, uh, you know, that made you uh, maybe straighten your arm or, or made you look different to the norm. Uh, tell me about that. Well, my, my arm was actually per was permanently bent. Um, this was from birth, because I remember my mother telling me that. Um, so it, coming up on television, it must not look worse. 
And the, the interesting part is that uh, from side on, you, you couldn't tell any difference or any delivery. But from behind, it was a definitely... It was a little bit... Yeah, it was crooked. But uh, it was a thing that I've had pretty well all my life and I couldn't really get out of it, yeah. There was rumours before the South African test that one board member, Clem Jones from Brisbane, had reservations about your action. Did you hear anything about that? Like, did you go to Brisbane for that South African test expecting to be no-balled? No, I didn't. I, I didn't know anything about it. No, uh, but the interesting thing is that I know that Ian McDonald, who I wrote the book with, or he wrote it for me, uh, he, he heard or he got a message down the line that before the day started, he said he was, he was told by his editor, be careful because I believe there's a bit of a rumour going around something's going to happen to Meckhoff. Really? And, uh, yeah, and it certainly happened, yeah. But, mm. No, I didn't know anything about it. In fact, the night before, I had a, I had a couple of beers with Colin Ego. So mm -hmm. and Ego was the man that called me. Because, yeah. This is the amazing part of the story. Because uh, it's been written that you and Igar actually played bowls together and won a trophy, and he took the trophy to Brisbane and gave you the trophy before the test match. Like, it's just almost impossible to believe you could have that relationship and the next day he no balls you out of cricket. It's extraordinary. Yeah, well, yeah, I, it, was, it was one of those things that I, you know, I, 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 to be quite honest with you, I, I still don't know why, why or anything. Nobody's ever told me anything. Colleague called you on the second, third, fifth and eighth ball of your only over in the South African test. What was sort of going through your body and your emotions at, at, at that time? Oh, well, I, I was completely shocked. And, but, and as I said, Richie Morley said to me that he said, I can't bowl you again. He said, he more said well, yeah, we've got a bit of a problem. And, and I said, well, you don't have to really tell me that. But, <laughs> um, but no, I, I couldn't quite work it out. And when, when you, you looked around and say all the team, the team guys, they, they were all shaking their head as if to say, well, yeah, well, this is all stupid, what's going on? Uh, you know, like I played, Bill Lurie was playing his, his test match up there. Um, and he, he, he was devastated with the whole thing. Alan Connolly playing his first test match, he was the same way. I mean, they were very upset with what happened here. Yeah. It was interesting because when Mattia Miralitarin was called for Sri Lanka, Bill was commentating and he said, I feel sick in the stomach the same way I felt when Ian Meckiff was called. Yeah. So it, he, can you remember, as you say, his distress? Yeah, he was. He definitely was. And Bill never said very much. Yeah. Uh, it, it, on things uh, cricket to do or well, anything to do with cricket, he was rather quiet about it all. But he he was he still was, he still mentioned it a little bit. But yeah, hey, gee, Bill's changed changed a bit since then. I dare say a few more opinions flying around these yeah. days. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> you know, he's quite a character, isn't he? Yeah. 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 And of course, you yourself were uh, you were at the MCG when Matai Muralitaran was no ball for throwing by Daryl Hare. And I remember going to see you and uh, you said, I, I can't talk about it, I'm, I'm too upset. I, I really am. And, and you were, weren't you? you? You were very upset. Oh, yeah, no, well, to see it, to see it happen, and it, there was a lot of people there and it was all, it came completely out of the blue, even though a lot of people had been talking about his action because it was so different. Uh, he was, what, double-jointed, I think, the way he bowled. But uh, it was something that, uh, yeah, no, I wasn't... I, I was quite staggered that it, 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 there it was happening, at, which, to me, it should never happen. Mm. It should, if it's going to be done, it should be done at, before the game starts, yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the crowd reaction? Because I've seen photos of you actually being chaired off the ground after that day by the crowd. Like, what was the crowd reaction like throughout the day? Uh, the, the crowd... Well, the, the, every time I went near the ball, they, they all cheered. I took a catch at one stage and they all cheered again, you know. But they, they were right behind me. But they, as you said, when I was coming off, I was terrified they were going to drop me on the concrete <laughs> when, they, when they had the greyhound track running around. So yeah. I was scared they were going to drop me. But, yeah, that would have been the end of the day, really. <laughs> would, have, would have been a real good day, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let's go back a bit and talk about playing bowls with the umpire who would future, in a few days later, would yeah. no-ball you out of test cricket. How did you get on with Cole? Like, was it... Tell us about that. Well, no, I got on very well with Cole. And he, he invited me at the end of it. She, it was a, a night game of bowls in, in Adelaide and it, it, during the Shield game, and he took me out there and we had something to eat and a game of bowls, yeah. But, no, I, I used to go to Adelaide, I'd say, about ten years in a row, 
when Cole was alive and uh, I always had a beer with him. It was the first first good pe person I always found to go and have a beer with. And, um, so uh, he and I got on very well. It, 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 in the end, when, the, when they changed the rule, which is what it, when, when it went to 10 degrees you, that you had the... the, yep. the uh, he, he more or less came to me when I was over there and he said, you'd be fine. Mm. You'd, you'd be as, as good as gold now. Were you surprised that it was Cole, though, uh, given your relationship with him? No, not really. Well, uh, in some ways, yeah, yeah, I was, but no, I, I don't think it matters. Cole was an umpire and he was a good umpire. He, he was one of the best umpires that was going around at the time. So if he thought it was happening... Mm. Uh, but I, the interesting thing, the, year, the season before, I'd, I'd played a game in Adelaide and uh, I bowled a lot of overs and I got called by, by one, one umpire but not by Cole. And Cole always said that he wasn't at my, my end. Now, if I bowled, say, 30 overs in the game, I'm sure I would have bowled at what, his end at some stage or another, yeah. But, no, he, he never let on in any way that, that there was anything wrong, yeah. Did you think you, you, your action was illegal, Ian? No, I didn't. No. Well, I, I knew. I, knew I, I put it this way: I wasn't trying to trying to be. Mm. Uh, I, I played in South Africa. I played in New Zealand. I played in India. I played in Pakistan. And uh, even an umpire came up to me in India and said to me, "He said, I don't know what they're complaining about with your action. I think it's pure." Mm. Now, for an Indian umpire to say that, you, it must be all right. The interesting thing is your relationship with colleague after it happened, where you said you had drinks again. Was there ever a quiet moment when it was just the two of you and you said, Cole, why? No, I, 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 wouldn't, I, do, I wouldn't ask him, actually. Really? No. He, he, he never really... You know, he didn't option to say anything. I thought somewhere along the line when, when he got... Was, you know, he was ailing a little bit, I thought something may have come out. That's no. a good point, before he yeah. passed away, because it, it would have been the sort of thing that a guy might say on his deathbed, isn't it? Like, sort of say, you need to know this, but he never did? No, he never did, no. I, I love the way, Ian, you're so unscarred by it, in, in a way, like you've been so positive about cricket. You had every reason to be bitter. Tell us about off the field, like the, the tough times you face from the man in the street or cars going past or, or, or things that, that, that hurt you. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of people you know, they call me Chucker and, uh, you know, and I, p people that I know and, and are friendly with I, I don't care mm. but outsiders say that sort of thing that you know, really got to me a little bit. Uh, my son did, we had to change school because they they called him Chucker uh, and he was only what in, about six or seven so we had to get him out of there. Uh, th there was a few little things like that, but uh, yeah, it still it still happens. There's still people still. That, that call that call you Chucker when you don't really want them to. But the interesting thing is, with your book, uh, you actually say Ian Chucker Meckiff as told to Ian McDonald because mates nicknamed you that, didn't you? So it wasn't offensive. Yet from other people, it was. So what was the idea of having having Chucker there? Uh, well, it was, I suppose at the time it. it, it uh, the, the, the press were very heavy on it. It's one of the reasons I think that I missed out on going to England, even though mm. uh, there, there was a there was a big conference that went with Bradman and uh, yes. uh, Bill Dowling went to England in in the 1960, I think it was yep. before the trip to, and uh, Bradman Bradman had a little hand uh, camera or a, a movie sort sort of thing, yep. and he got he went down to the BBC and got some footage of flowerwood bowling. Oh. And he, he played and he put it in the... reversed it. Dear. And at the meeting, he, he, he put it on and he said, I've just want something to show you. You're talking about Meckiff and all that sort of thing. Really? And he, he put it in and wound it right, right, and it, there it was. And they said, who's that? He said, who is that? And they said, that's Meckiff. And he turned it round the other way and he said, have a look who it is now. Yeah. Really? Now, so I know that actually happened, yeah. Wow. So he showed the English footage of their hero, bodyline hero, Harold Larwood, yeah. in reverse yeah. and pretended it was you. Yeah. And they said he's got a bad action. Yeah. Oh, you wouldn't mind being around to see that one. <laughs> That's a great story. Yeah. That is amazing. Your action seemed to divide the world along sort of... Uh, national lines, I suppose you could say, because you got quite a deal of support from journalists in Australia, didn't you? But England uh, was very sceptical, wasn't it? They're journalists. Is that correct? Yeah, well, I think the, the worst part about it is when I took wickets. <laughs> they didn't do anything until I took wickets against them. But uh, and they, they 
because I was fairly erratic as well. And I thought in the first test match, even though I did get wickets in the first test against them in Melbourne, in, in Brisbane, uh, I don't think they were worried because I was too erratic and it wouldn't happen and all that sort of thing. But it was after I got the six, that's when it really started, yeah. What direction did they give you, Bradman? They said you could continue to play in some areas, is that right? Or... I, I could play shield cricket, but only could be in Victoria. Wow. I, I couldn't play in any other state. Does that strike you as ridiculous? It was, yeah. 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 I, I couldn't understand it, really, because... But I, 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 didn't, I didn't want to play cricket. Well, I wanted to play cricket. I, I loved playing, playing the game, but uh, I thought, well, somewhere along the line, I could... You know, I, I'd go and play in a district game and a bloke wants his name in the paper and he could call me and you'll get his name there. And I said, no, I'm, I'm not going to do any more of that. I, I, I was playing golf, so I, I joined the golf club and uh, well, no, actually, I'd already been a, a member of a golf club, and that was my sport from then on. Yeah. Did you miss it? Uh, yeah. I, well, I missed it. Plus the fact I missed the, the comradeship and you know, blokes that you've been. You, you go away for six months with a with a group of people. You get to know them pretty well, mm. and uh, you, know, you, uh, you you miss that sort of thing because that, that, that's what that's what cricket's about. Well, all right, so I'm being foolish. Well, all right, let me... Australia led by only 49 runs. Then England's second innings was wrecked by Ian Meckiff, who took six wickets for 38 from 15 overs. Australia won by eight wickets. Great day as a test bowler came at the MCG when you took six for 38 against the Poms. That must have been Melbourne boy firing up at the MCG. That must have been heaven for you, was it? It was enjoyable. <laughs> very, very enjoyable. Because all the Bay 13 was used to be the Wharfies and all that sort of thing. And they, they used to go to the Shield cricket and all that. They'd all cheer me on. I was, I was their number one boy. As Bill Lurie used to say that he said he used to get the new ball, he'd put, hang it up there and show it to them. But he said they'd all cheer and all that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, they were right behind it. And, well, I think I bowled, what, 16 overs straight. Mm. Eight ball overs. I mean, today they, they take them off after they bowl three six <laughs> ball overs. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I wasn't going to give the ball away. Rich, Richie just kept bowling me. And, yeah, R Richie was such a debonair figure, and uh, we love showing old photos of him to, to prove that on Legends. What what was Richie to you, like uh, as a captain and a, and a mentor? Like, what was he? What was he like? What was his style? Well, it, he, he was. He was one of the first people to really show emotion when, you know, if you took a wicket, he'd jump up in the air and he'd run up to you and give you more as a bit of a hug and things like that. And, of course, you went on a, an amazingly long tour of the subcontinent where you played eight tests in Pakistan and in India over 12 weeks. Ian, that is brutal now, never mind in 1959. Was it, was it a tough tour? Yeah, it, was, it really was tough. Yeah, we... <laughs> I suppose the, the thing that made it worse was the health side of it. Because you, you, over there in those days, I mean, this is going back a long while ago, and you, your hotels were very ordinary, your food was pretty ordinary, you couldn't drink water uh, because it was... Even if they gave you bottled water, you wouldn't... You'd clean your teeth with bottled water. Uh, but you, you wouldn't touch the water coming out of the tap. You couldn't have things like orange juice. And, uh, so you, and your food had to be very careful. No cold food. It all had to be, uh, it all had to be heated and cleaned up. Uh, you could the only you could have uh, oranges or you could have bananas, but that was. <laughs> what did you drink? How did well, you get through? Well, you just drank coffee, or some the tea or coffee basically. Mm -hmm. But in the end, uh, we, we finished up. Carlton United sent us uh, uh, 240 dozen cans of beer. So did they? But that was when we were in India. So we we'd already had three, uh, three test matches against Pakistan. Did they uh, suffice you? Did any come home or were they suitably no, drunk? Nothing, nothing was came home. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I guess, uh, you know, there's a light side to the, to the food issue, but a very serious one as well. Like, you toured... Gavin Stevens on that tour never played uh, another game of first-class cricket after contracting hepatitis, didn't he? And yep. even wrote a book it's called Death on the Subcontinent where the reports that he died. That's, Remember that? No, I don't, actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> but there was actually four. Four guys got hepatitis. 
It was Gordon Rourke got it, got it during the, uh, the second Test match and he never played again on that tour. Lindsay Klein got it in... Uh, what, 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 you know, people, I don't know what they call the city anymore, but it was uh, Madras. Yes. Uh, that's where uh, yeah. uh, Lindsay Klein went down. And then uh, he he was on the uh, when we go went uh, to Calcutta to play the uh, the last Test match, Lindsay was on the plane home, and there's a good story there <laughs> that uh, I was in bed, at sound asleep, and the phone went. This is during the Test match, and uh, the phone went, and I answered it, and I said, well, "Yeah," and it was a voice that said, "Where are you?" And I said, "You've just woken me up." And he said, well, I think you'd better hurry up and get dressed because they've just gone out onto the ground and you're not here. Oh! And remember, at that stage, we only had 12 fit players. There was, so there was... Barry Jarman was the 12th man. But when you think about it, I didn't know that... Because Lindsay Klein was my roomie and he was my alarm clock. And this was Gavin Stevens ringing me from the ground to tell me, that what, what's happened when you, you couldn't happen today where you've actually... Got, God, they're all gone down for breakfast and they haven't noticed I wasn't there. They haven't got noticed when I was getting in the cars or the bus, whatever it was. <laughs> They've got to the ground and all got chains. They still haven't noticed. <laughs> They've walked out onto the ground when we're fielding and Richie's picked the ball up as they used to and he, they don't, didn't throw it around. He just threw it over his head. He said, yeah, Becca, you can bowl. So they get out the middle and there's the ball still there. <laughs> so you... could, one could only say that I was the most popular member of the team. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, of course, you played a series of interesting test matches against Pakistan on Koya matting, uh, where, you know, the, the sort of... The little medium paces would create havoc, didn't they? And they had a couple who were, you know, a police inspector. Was it Fazal Mahmood, who was the magician of the mats? It must have been fascinating games of cricket. Test matches on, on matting. Yeah. Well, the mats were about, around about 100 yards long and you ran up on them and they had little slots where the wickets went. Lindsay Klein used to... Have, he was 12th man in that test match and he had to be at the ground two hours before because what they used to do when you were batting, they'd loosen the bat up. Really? <laughs> or they wouldn't tighten. But when they were batting, it was really tight. So the ball couldn't see? Yeah. <laughs> so so Lind, Lindsay and Barry Jarman, they, they went down and made... A couple of times, they made them pick them up and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that's the sort of thing that would happen with the map. But Ken Mackay got six six wickets in, in the second innings there to win that game. It was the first time that they'd ever been beaten on, uh, in Pakistan. We played the second one on on, uh, on turf, and then the third one was on the mat again. Mm. And the interesting thing with that one is that we were in a bit of a losing spot. Mm. And the, would you believe the president of uh, of the United States, oh. Eisen, Eisenhower? He was at the cricket with the Pakistani blazer on. Really? And, uh, yeah, while he was there, we got wickets. <laughs> so we wanted him to stay on. He said, I think I'd better go. <laughs> and you also toured South Africa in the apartheid era. What was your impression of, of life over there during, the, during apartheid? Because very few Australian uh, sporting teams uh, went there. Well, it, we didn't really have any trouble at all. We, we, we knew it was on and we were basically told that we couldn't fraternise with the, with the native people. Um, but it was... They kept us... We were kept away from it, put it that way. But we knew the, the apartheid thing was there, but we more or less, where we could, we, we always had a bit of a chat. So you were told to keep away from the natives, but didn't a couple of the boys go down and have a game of cricket with the natives? No, they didn't have a game, but they, they actually were driving past and they saw the game there. And uh, they went... They got out of the car and went, went and had a bit of a look. I think they were with, with Ray Robinson, the old Juno, who's yeah. a delightful man. And uh, they went and had a bit of a look and evidently it got back to, the, to somebody. And uh, they were reprimanded very heavily and they'd do it again and you'll be back on the, you'll be back on the way home. Isn't that incredible punishment for just watching a game of cricket? Yep. And did that punishment come from threatened from Australia or South Africa? No, I, I, well, I think that somebody, somebody passed it on to the manager and the manager said, this is, this is what will happen, yeah. You had many challenges in your career and you've surged through it to be the most positive fellow. Uh, where does that come from? Is it a naturally strong spirit? Uh... Oh, no, I think it was just... Uh, I just love... I love cricket. I love, I love playing golf. I, I love sport. Uh, uh, you know, I played football. You know, I was... Sport was more or less my life. Yeah. 
Uh, and uh, but that's one of the things, I suppose, that uh, taking that away from me, that hurt me more than anything, I suppose, in its own way. But uh, no, I, I just I just think it's kept, if you like, if you like, enjoy it and you enjoy your people and your pe people you play golf with or things like that. Uh, that. That to me is what life's about. You've said it all in. You're an inspiration to everyone. Uh, I love the way you've told your story and the way you live life. A very positive man. I was so looking forward to having you on Cricket Legends and you didn't disappoint. Thanks for joining us. Okay, thank you, Chris. Thank you.